Welcome back, viewers, to another exciting episode of the Learn Medicine Show. Today, we are diving straight into the fascinating world of the cardiac axis. Now, the cardiac axis is all about measuring the mean direction of electrical activity within the heart. So picture this. Under normal circumstances, the electrical activity flows like a symphony through the chambers of the heart, following its intricate electroconduction pathways. This orchestration produces distinct waves on our ECG trace. The P waves, QRS complex, and the T waves. But here's where things get really interesting. So those ECG electrodes that we place on the body, they record the net movement of electrical activity. And we call this net movement of electrical activity a vector. And when the vector moves towards the ECG electrodes, the resulting wave on the trace becomes more positive. Conversely, when the vector moves away, the wave becomes more negative. So armed with this knowledge, let's uncover the secrets of the cardiac axis by focusing on two key players, the QRS complexes from lead 1 and lead AVF. These complexes can be positive, meaning that they generally extend above the isoelectric line, or negative, meaning that they generally extend below it. By examining them closely, we can calculate the cardiac axis. The cardiac axis is measured in degrees, so we need to add some reference points to our exploration. Let me introduce you to the hexaxial reference system. This amazing system gives us 360 degrees of reference points. This is all done in 30 degree segments, and these segments correspond to our limb leads in the vertical plane. Now let's focus on our two key players. Lead 1 takes the perspective of electrical activity from reference point 0, while lead AVF looks at it from 90 degrees. So it's like having two different lenses to capture the heart's electrical dance from two distinct angles. Now let's move on to the exciting part, calculating the cardiac axis. The normal axis falls between minus 30 and 90 degrees. As the electrical activity moves towards the apex of the heart, it also moves towards lead 1, making the QRS complex positive. The electrical activity also moves towards AVF, making the QRS complex here also positive. So both leads have positive QRS complexes. This is like a double thumbs up from the heart, telling us that everything is okay. But what happens when the main vector of electrical activity changes? Let's take a look. We'll start with right axis deviation. Right axis deviation occurs when the main vector of electrical activity moves towards the right ventricle. The axis falls between 90 and 180 degrees. In this scenario, the electrical activity moves away from lead 1, making the QRS complex negative, and moves towards lead AVF, resulting in a positive QRS complex. To remember this pattern, just think of the phrase, right is reaching, indicating that the QRS complexes from lead 1 and AVF appear to be reaching towards one another. Right axis deviation can be caused by various factors. It can be a normal variant seen in neonates, but it can be also caused by pathological processes such as right ventricular hypertrophy or core pulmonale. Now let's shift our focus to left axis deviation. This occurs when the vector of electrical activity moves towards the left side of the heart and falls between minus 30 to minus 90 degrees. As the electrical activity moves towards the left side of the heart, lead 1 becomes positive, whilst lead AVF turns negative. These outputs tell us that the cardiac axis falls somewhere between 0 and minus 90 degrees in the highlighted area. 
But to confirm left axis deviation, we need to be certain that the axis falls between minus 30 and minus 90 degrees. To confirm left axis deviation, we can introduce a further lead, lead 2. And so long as the electrical vector is moving away from lead 2, producing a negative QRS complex in this lead, we can be certain that the axis falls between minus 30 and minus 90. I'm going to shade in the area of the hexaxial reference system here, so you can see what this adds to our analysis. It's effectively showing that the vector is moving beyond the minus 30 degrees, so we can confirm left axis deviation. If this explanation is making you feel puzzled, do not worry. Just remember the following. Left is leaving, meaning that the QRS complexes in lead 1 and AVF are moving away from one another, drifting apart. Their drifting apart makes lead 2 become sad, giving it a negative disposition. Poor lead 2. Left axis deviation can be caused by factors such as left ventricular hypertrophy, left bundle branch block, and inferior myocardial infarction. Finally, let's talk about the extreme axis. This happens when electrical impulses originate from the ventricles and spread upwards, and fall between minus 90 and 180 degrees. In this scenario, the mean vector moves away from both lead 1 and AVF, resulting in both complexes being negative. It's like a double thumbs down sign from the heart, showing us that things are not okay. Extreme axis deviation can be caused by inappropriately placed ECG leads, but can also be caused by ventricular tachycardia. And with that, we conclude our captivating journey into the realms of the cardiac axis. But do not go anywhere because the next show is all about rapid clinical assessment of the ECG. Trust me, this one is going to be mind blowing. Keep your curiosity alive, my friends. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next show.